It's time to dip back into the mailbag. We'll talk about signing summer league guys, internal growth trades, atoning for basketball sins, and how the schedule is made. It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making this show part of your daily routine. I'm here for you daily with a free, fresh podcast Monday through Friday, dropped to whatever device you're using. If you subscribe, whether you listen to the show or watch the show on YouTube, you'll get this show free every day of the week uh, until, I guess, uh, August and September, where we go down to three days a week. Uh, because it's the dead period. And while most people aren't podcasting, I will be three times a week in August and September. Just prepare yourself. The daily podcast goes away at the end of July, comes back uh, once the, well, as things are warranted. So if some weeks there's some, for some reason, a chance to go five days a week, sure, we'll still do that. But get your expectations set. Three days a week coming up. Uh, in August, September, when training camp starts back up and the news starts to pick up again, back to a daily podcast. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, and I was one of the media voters for the Celtics 75th anniversary team. Mailbag uh, in full effect. I normally do Mailbag Monday during the uh, offseason. Monday was kind of a chance to get up, get caught up on the – End of summer league, so I answered a few mailbag questions. I feel like I shortchanged you. And after I gave out the link, which is johncorrales.com slash mailbag, johncorrales.com slash mailbag, that uh, usually calls for an influx of questions. I get flooded with questions right away. So a bunch of questions came in, so I figured I'll answer a bunch of them. Now, I apologize, people who send via DM, I get DMs through two Twitter accounts, through two Instagram accounts, through YouTube. I can't be going all of the, this is the easiest way to do it. This is the easiest way for me to keep it all in one place. Uh, I apologize that this is the way I have to do it, but it's really the only way for me to keep everything together so I can go when it's time to do a mailbag, get the questions and sorry, that's just the way it works. That's how I'm going to do it. So. Paul kicks us off uh, with the mailbag question. And it's my question too. Why haven't the Celtics signed Matt Ryan to a roster contract after his strong summer league showing? I don't know the answer to that because I thought he had earned a spot on the roster. I thought he, uh, as a six, seven shooter was good enough to earn a, at least two way. Now, does that mean, he's not going to be on the Celtics. I don't know. Maybe the Celtics don't like the fact that he's uh, still working on his defense. Maybe they don't like the fact that he's older and they don't want to invest in a wing that maybe doesn't have, uh, has a, a shorter time span to develop. And they don't want to invest time and money, especially in their tax situation. Maybe, maybe, maybe we, I especially am overvaluing a good summer league performance and Hey, he hit a few shots. He looked good, but maybe at this next level, he's just, they don't see that translatable stuff. Maybe they just don't see it. Maybe they want to go in a different direction. I don't know. So I, I'm, I'm, and you know, if you heard me with Tom Westerholm, we both were like, yeah, this, this kid looks good. And so might as well give him a look. If they don't want to, then, Fine. Maybe, maybe the professional talent evaluators uh, on the Celtics see something that I don't. And uh, that's entirely possible because more, more often than not, they do. Uh, we'll see what happens. He could be invited to camp. He could be uh, somebody that's fighting for a roster spot. 
maybe, maybe who knows, who knows it, it's possible. Maybe he goes off and becomes another Max Struess type. You, it's, it's so many possibilities, but right now I cannot answer the question. Why haven't they signed Matt Ryan to a roster spot? Henry says, John, am I the only one who saw Cabin Gelly take on Wiseman and play him even, maybe even frustrate him? We know we'll be seeing this Warriors team again. Uh, then he goes on to make some comparisons, uh, basically advocating for Cabin Gelly uh, to, I don't know, have a bigger role. I don't know. I, I've, been, I've been pretty clear on my thoughts about Cabin Gelly over the past couple of weeks. He's a good player. I mean, he's he's good, and and I think summer league showed some good things, and also showed some things that I thought were, hey, maybe maybe it's just a product of summer league. I I like most people. You get fixated on one thing, and you say, okay, I, I'm I advocate for this, and I saw Kevin Gelly, and I said, hey, that's nice, but another guy who's older, another guy who who's had. NBA uh, opportunities and hasn't been able to really cash in on those. He was a former first round pick. Yeah. He looked good in summer league. I, I think this is a, this could be a situation where he's a guy who looks good in summer league. Cause he's a former first round pick and you're supposed to look good in summer league when you're 25 or 24 and you're a former first round pick and you have that level of talent. I don't know if he's, I don't know what I don't know what his future is. I don't know, and I don't know if this is the case. I feel like the Celtics might be playing a little bit of a game with the two-way system right now. The two-way system was in place, put in place to basically uh, give a guy who was not quite NBA ready and a team didn't want to put put him directly into the G League. Like they, they didn't want to sign the guy because they didn't have a roster spot and they didn't think he was worth a roster spot. But they found him interesting enough where they wanted to have the opportunity for a couple of years to develop his skills without sending him to Maine and having another team come along. And be like, oh, we want him. We're going to poach him from you because any the, the main the main Celtics can sign anybody, me, to a G League contract. And if I go out there and perform and score 20 points a game and the Pacers want to come along and sign me, then they, I can go sign with whomever. G League contract doesn't tie you to the NBA team. Uh, by the way, I will not be paying playing for the Indiana Pacers or the you know Newton 50, almost 50 <laughs> men's. I will not be playing any basketball. But – the two way is supposed to be a developmental thing. I'm kind of curious to see if the Celtics are using it as a developmental thing, or if they're just saying, Hey, the new rules are you can pay cap and Gelly or any two way player a little more than $500,000. He can play 50 games for you. We need a big, we can, we can kind of make do with him for now. He's going to get a bunch of DNPs anyway. So if he plays 50 games for us, that's great. And yeah, we can send him to the G League some, but we're basically keeping him as a 16th player that we pay $500,000 to. Uh, I I feel like that might be part of the game that they're playing. If that's the case, and it's hard to say whether that's the case or not, and the Celtics can say you know, publicly, no, no, we're developing the guy and all that stuff, which is you know fine. But I, if if it becomes clear that the Celtics are just kind of using that spot, that two way spot, as a way to say, hey, we're gonna have we're gonna carry five bigs, and we'll have our two starters. We'll have Luke Cornett. We'll sign a guy, and we'll have Cabin Gelly just kind of there, and he'll play. The 50 games, he'll make his $502,000. He won't play in the playoffs. If for some reason he's great, you can always upgrade the contract. You can convert him to a regular contract. And from there, if he if he pitches in a little bit, it's insurance. I just wonder if they use that, will they – will somebody raise a question? 
because it it violates the spirit of the two way contract. And I wonder if other teams are going to be like, "Whoa, wait a second, the Celtics are onto something." And I haven't seen the other NBA players, uh, other NBA teams, how they're using their two ways. So it's possible they they could be doing that as well. Maybe the Celtics copied somebody else. I, that part I, I might not know. So it's uh, it's possible that uh, there's either they're going to start a trend, be part of a trend. I'm just kind of curious watching that. I'll get to another summer league question, and we'll we'll kind of flip it into Peyton Pritchard and Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White. We'll be doing that after. I tell you about betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, obviously, NHL, combat sports, esports, golf, everything. It's all there at Bet Online, which continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn about the action happening today bet online is where the game starts please gamble responsibly which nfl stars move the betting line the most starting this week all this week lockdown gives you the 50 most valuable players in the nfl from the odds makers at bet online this started this week so july 18th it's all available on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts, and on YouTube. Continuing the mailbag comes from uh, Stannis, who asks a few questions. One, how did the uh, Chinanu and Waku workout go? There are some answers after a Baines workout, but total silence after this one. Is there a chance the C's will go European route to fill the veteran big man spot, considering the slim pickings on the NBA free agent market? and their recent success adding a Euro big to the roster. I haven't heard anything. I don't know how that workout went. I know the Celtics were there. I don't know how they feel about it. Uh, I feel like if it was a great workout, they might have signed the guy already, but I have, I have no idea how that went. But a Euro big is possible. They certainly, certainly could go that route. We're very focused on the free agents available for the Celtics on, you know, the former NBA veteran, but uh, maybe, maybe there are some guys from overseas. The Celtics can go look at sign them and, and, and kind of go from there. It, it, it's possible. Uh, the other question is, is it time to sell high on Pritchard? His minutes may be hard to come by. Is he worth a lottery pick uh, protected first rounder? And if Pritchard, Pritchard is traded, is there a need for another point guard? Well, no, if he's traded, it's because you have too many point guards. I mean, you can fill that spot. You can say um, you can get a uh, end of bench kind of ball handler type at the end of his career and just say, we're going to keep a fourth big and we're going to keep a fourth point guard at the end of the bench in spots 13 and 14. That That's fine, I guess, if you want. Uh Selling high on Pritchard right now, I, I feel like Pritchard is potentially. I mentioned this yesterday when we talked with Keith Smith. I feel like Pritchard is a candidate during the season to potentially get moved. Uh, he makes a couple million bucks, and because it's so exponential, reducing two million dollars also re- reduces uh, at this point the way this the Celtics tax will go is. Six, almost eight million dollars. Probably it could save them. So ten million total in if they move him for nothing. So that that's look if if the Celtics are eating money with Pritchard and he's not getting any run, and it's very obvious that his time is basically up. Would they do that just to save some money? Maybe. Um, I think. You'd be more likely to move him in an effort to get somebody back with the TPE and say, hey, here's your promising young guy or here's a guy that you could kind of rely on. Maybe maybe someone in Utah, maybe Danny Ainge will, because he he loves Pritchard, he drafted Pritchard. Maybe Ainge will take Pritchard 
and uh, one of his one of his veterans that he's trying to jettison as they go into the tank. So it's possible uh, if I had to pick one guy who isn't here at the end of the year, it's Pritchard. But I, I don't think that if he was moved, it would necessitate the signing of another point guard. Mike asks, and along a similar vein, with the addition of Malcolm Brogdon, how do you see it affecting Derek White this upcoming season? I honestly, I don't see it having much of an impact. I think the Celtics, the, this isn't the kind of older NBA where right now, if, if, if I were doing a podcast 10 years ago and positions were very much uh, more defined, I think I'd be sitting here saying, well, somebody's got to get traded because you can't have three point guards um, and I don't want to turn one of these guys into a shooting guard. I, I, I probably would have been very kind of, this is your box. This is your box. This is your box. Cause that's how the NBA used to be. Your box is you're this height. You're this weight. You're this style of play. Guess what? You're a small forward. You're a power forward. Now, maybe somebody played power forward and center. Maybe somebody played small forward and power forward, but there wasn't the type of positional versatility where Jason Tatum can at the, on the same possession, bring the ball up and then still be the biggest guy on the floor and uh, be your small ball five, right? If you, if you run a lineup out there of Brogdon, White, and Marcus Smart, and Jalen Brown, and you make Tatum the biggest guy on the floor, it's not out of the question to have Tatum take the ball, grab a rebound, and go, and just set up the offense, or, or just run a set where he's the guy at the top. And it's – so with positions kind of – eliminated in a lot of ways, I think it, it takes away the uh, impact that Brogdon and White and Smart kind of have on each other positionally. I think White is is probably, if anything, it's, it's probably going to push him a little bit more off ball more often. He's going to be maybe, uh, or, or you, you, you make Malcolm, the more of a shooting guard and less of a point guard. And you just have a smart and Derek white kind of be the two point guardy guys. And Brogdon is more of the off ball guy. He's a better shooter. Uh, I'm not sure how they'll, they'll do it. I think for me right now on paper, I think I'd rather just see smart and either Derek White, maybe, maybe smart and white kind of mostly smarts, the point guard starting point guard and Derek White is the backup point guard and Brogdon kind of like fills gaps. Maybe that's the best way to go. Uh, I'd like to see smart not be played as the shooting guard and however that works out, that works out. But that's my, that's my, my hope is that smart, plays primarily point guard and maybe he gives up a couple of minutes a game, which probably will, will be fine uh, at least during the regular season to keep him healthy. And from there, it's, it's kind of like a, you know, once, once you, once you start the play, it's, it's things should be in motion. So you you don't need, I don't think you need point guard, just point guard a, and this is your role. It's versatile. So I think white is going to fit in. He's going to get his minutes. I think he's going to be fine. And especially if the ball moves the way he may wants it to Adam asks the last time we saw this team in the finals where a number of guys really struggled to be effective uh, at times. Do you think there'll be major growth for guys like Grant and Peyton and Derek white maybe even Jalen and Jason as a result of being tested at the highest levels during the finals. Basically, do you think going to the finals would mean major development, a major developmental leap for this team? I, I say yes, maybe more hopeful than anything, but I think when a player gets to that level and realizes how difficult it is to get from Hey, we made it to the finals too. 
wow, we're in a championship parade. Once you see how difficult that leap is from finals participant to finals winner, I think it should spur a little bit of a, uh, a fire. Like, okay, I wasn't good enough. Jalen and Jason turn the ball over a ton. Derek White, you know, the, the shot went away. Grant Williams didn't play particularly well. Pritchard didn't shoot well. All of those guys should go into the summer kind of seething a little bit. And with a, du- a direct plan set by the team and an understanding like with yourself and your trainer, these are the things that I think we need to do to make me better at what I do and better as a contributor. I, I would say there's a plan in place. Everybody should have a plan in place to hit the summer hard and improve. I think there is a, a, a bit of a leap, even, even if it's just the mental leap where just understanding what it takes, just understanding, okay, we put ourselves in this position to, to, to have to burn our starters out. We put ourselves in this position. The, you know, Jalen and Jason can say, if we didn't, start the season 18 and 21 and we started the season a little bit better, we would have been the one seed. We would have had a little bit more of an advantage. We could have rested a little bit more. So maybe that mental kind of edge gives you a, a, a kind of some internal improvement. So yes, I do believe that there will be a developmental leap. Is it major? Is it minor? We'll see, but there should be. And I think there will be. All right, up next, some love for Jalen Brown, uh, a trade for John Collins, maybe, uh, and uh, how the schedule is made. We're going to do all of that when I come back here on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thanks for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Why not make Lockdown NBA your second listen every day? I just recorded the Wednesday episode of Lockdown NBA with Jake Madison of Lockdown Pelicans. We talked a lot about the DeAndre Ayton situation. We talked about the Miami Heat and what their trade package uh, for potentially Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell. Is is their trade package really any good? They keep being thrown into rumors. Is it any good, really? And then a discussion about Steph Curry, a very end-of-July discussion about Steph Curry, about his greatness and his influence on the NBA. So check that out, Locked on NBA, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and on YouTube, wherever you find, wherever you found this show, Locked On NBA exists there. Henry says, "Why does no one show Jalen the love after he hung thirty on the Warriors in the final game? Why do you think the media doesn't get that the constant ribbing will drive him away?" Jermaine Wiggins reporting is an example. I include this to say that if players are if, if a player is sitting there saying like, oh, the media doesn't appreciate me, I'm going to go to another city. I would caution that player that that is not a, if you feel, if you don't feel appreciated by the media in one city, you won't feel appreciated by the media in the other city either. And I will add to that. Don't pay attention to the media. And The final point is understand what the media is, who the media is, and stop lumping everybody into the same thing. This is where I really get a problem with players who just say, oh, the media this, the media that, or fans even, the media this, the media that. Who's the media? Who's the? Are you putting me and Jermaine Wiggins in the same category? Because I hope not. Because... We're not the same. He's a a talking head on the radio who has to say controversial things in an effort to drive ratings and to get people to react. Okay. That's his job. His job is to be bombastic. That's what Boston sports talk radio is. That's what sports talk radio is. That's why I love as a podcaster needling those guys. Cause that's not me. That's not what I do. I try to be entertaining. I try to be informative, but I'm never going to be hot take guy 
that that's just sitting here saying like, oh, I'm going to say what what outrageous thing can I say right now that will get people to listen? Because my goal is not to enhance me. I'm not here for me. I'm here for you. I'm here to make your experience better. I'm not here to pump up me and make the John Corrales brand something. No, that's not what I'm here for. I, I love my job. I love where I am. I don't want anything to change. I'll sit here and do this podcast until I die in front of the microphone. I'm happy to do that. But some people, they just want to, they, they have their own personal ambitions. So they know I got to get noticed. They know I got to go and uh, say something this. I got I to be bombastic. And that's how they get their attention. So if you're going to lump those people in with me, then I got some choice words for you that I can share privately because uh, that's not who I am. You can't lump the media into all the same things. Yeah, I have opinions for sure, but I, as a beat writer, uh, I also am the one who's there and I face these guys every day when during the season. I'm the one... Like Jalen Brown can say anything he wants to me anytime. He knows where to find me. He knows where I am after a game. If he wanted to talk to me, he could pull me aside and be like, Hey, I didn't like what you said on your podcast. I didn't like what you said this. I don't like if he wanted to. And if I said something about Jalen Brown and he said, well, that's wrong. He could pull me aside and be like, where'd you get that from? And now that's never happened to me, but I know it's happened to people and it could happen to me. If I ever report something or whatever. So this whole thing about the media, the media doesn't get the constant ribbing will drive them away. People got to understand the media is not some monolith, right? If I were to say all basketball players think blah, 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 I'm sure individual basketball players would be like, why, why are you going to say that? You know, every basketball player is only thinking about money all the time. That would be an unfair statement. You know, if I, it, it, it's like when some, you know, you hear the shut up and dribble and all of that, that thing. So learn, learn what the difference is between the media. Learn who those, the radio talking heads are. Learn who the Twitter accounts are and learn who the people who are actually somewhat responsible here in our reporting and our, in our opinions that are shaped by things that we see. That's, that's the thing. So people, people will lump everybody together. If Jalen doesn't understand that, if an NBA player doesn't understand that, if a fan doesn't understand that, then take a second, take a second to understand the difference. And if you're a player and the ribbing bothers you, then shut it off because there's sports talk radio in every city and this bombastic opinion for the sake of, making opinions that happens everywhere. Your name is going to be thrown into this all the time. This is universal. Now the internet has made it universal. So if you decide, Hey, I can't take it in Boston, man, it's not, I'm not going to sit here and be the person who calls you soft for not being able to take it. What I'm going to say to you is you're going to go to another city and it's going to be the same thing. And you're going to say, oh, wow, I can't escape this. You're not going to escape the people who want to say things just for the sake of saying things. That's going to be, that's, so you have to understand reality is you have to isolate yourself or figure out a way to make that not bother you. Now I say all of this to say, uh, I want to be clear. I don't know if Jalen actually is bothered by any of this stuff. I don't think any of this actually applies to Jalen. All of that rant that I just went on is certainly not directed specifically towards him. It's directed in general to any player who may think that way. Um, if it's Jalen, then it's directed at Jalen. But if he doesn't think that way, then it's not directed at him. It's directed at any player who may think that way, any fan who might think that way. That's it. I don't think media conversations about players – drives players away. Maybe it drives one guy away here or there because there's no like 
absolutes. But um, I think that everybody should be a little bit more, I think, responsible when it comes to the, the, the things that they say, just in general, the things that they say and the things that the way they process their information. All right. It's not, no one likes to deal in absolutes and uh, no one wants to be lumped in with an entire group, especially if that's just your profession. My profession is not the same as other people's profession. I'm going to leave it there because I can go on and on and on. I'd be happy to go on and on and on uh, in a different setting. You're probably bored with this. Let's rip through the last few questions here. Derek, do you think the Celtics should try and trade for John Collins to replace Al Horford? This would be giving the C's a young big three and core. So um, I don't see a trade. I know that Derek suggests one. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, I don't, first of all, Collins is, is a nice player, but he's not, I don't think he's uh, the, the third, the third piece, so to speak. I don't think he's the guy um, that's going to go out there and, and change, change your fortunes, but look, 16 points, he shoots uh, 37% from three. That's nice. Uh, you know, he's a good offensive player. He's not going to be a great defensive player and he does suffer from some injuries. I don't, and he's look 23.5 million next year, 25.3 the year after 26.5 the year after and the year. And after that, it's the same amount on a player option. So he still has a few years left on his deal and it's a very expensive deal. Do the Celtics want to commit to that kind of money for that player? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 it doesn't, it, it's a lot of money to be spending on a guy that I don't think will be Ime's top choice when it comes to defensive lineups. So uh, I'm going to say no, but also I, I tend to say no to a lot of these potential trades. Uh, Henry asks, do you subscribe to the notion that you have to atone for your basketball sins before the basketball gods smile on you? No, I don't subscribe to that at all. And I know the rest of this question is about uh, bringing in Isaiah Thomas as some sort of some sort of role. I don't think that this is. I don't think. I don't believe in. I, I understand that Isaiah Thomas was traded, and people think that that's some sort of big affront. And the Celtics are jinxed in some way because they traded Isaiah Thomas after the hip and after all of that stuff. The Celtics made a business move. They made a business decision to trade in a small guard who, yes, he just got hurt, but a small guard who played a style. Most small guards play a style that – you question their durability and they made a decision to go for Kyrie Irving, who at that point, we didn't know the full scope of Kyrie Irving's, you know, everything that he is as far as on the basketball court, just not trustworthy. It was a business decision and that's it. That's final. And by the way, you traded Isaiah Thomas to the Cavs and LeBron. You didn't trade him to Sacramento. You traded him to the Cavs and LeBron. You didn't do wrong by him. You traded him and Crowder and you sent them to the Cavs and you, they, you gave them a chance to, hey, if he was healthy, he would have gotten paid. If he was, you know, the, it, the Cavs, if, if things had worked out differently, the Cavs were a potential they were a contender you traded him to a contending team with lebron james let's let this go let it go isaiah thomas yeah i get it i understand why this was this is seen as some affront to the basketball gods it's an nba business decision and it sucks i love isaiah thomas I, I 
can, I feel what people are feeling, but also it's, it's not any, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's gone. It's done. It's done. It's over. Final question. Edison, Edison says, I have a question about the 82 games and the schedule. I know they play 41 home, 41 away. They're divided between uh, two games against the other conference, four games in the same division, and three or four games with the same conference, but different division. Who decides if it's a three or four games uh, against the same conference, different division? What goes into picking that? And so here it is. The, the schedule is simple. Who? It's four games against division opponents. Four games uh, against the out-of-division opponents with a rotation where some out-of-division conference teams, you only play three times. Every five years or so, like there's just the rotation of different – it's a different group of teams. So kind of like the NFL schedule. Um, so that's a set rotation. Every few years, you'll see, oh, they were playing this team again four times. So that's what goes into that. And with the two, two t- games against teams in the opposing conference, you now have your 82-game schedule. That's what goes into it. There's a lot that figures into when you play uh, arena availability. NHL, do you share with the NHL what's their schedule? A lot of working around. Sometimes you play on the same day. And there's just no avoiding it. The Bruins and the Celtics have to play on Saturday, December, whatever. And all right, who's got the afternoon game? Sometimes it's the Bruins, sometimes it's the Celtics. And the Bull Gang goes in there and changes things over because they have no choice. And because the next day's booked and whatever. It's a complicated thing. Complicated to put a schedule together in arenas that are shared by other major professional sports and trying to book things that make the arenas money, like concerts, which are booked way out in advance. Concerts are booked before the Celtics schedule is released. So sometimes you have weird stretches of, well, here's three games off. And you're like, why did the Celtics have four days off or three days off? in the middle of the schedule. So weird because the Bruins, because of concerts, because the other teams that they're trying to play can't get on the road. And there's, it, it, it's all kind of weird, but it's a very, very, very complicated scenario to build a schedule. It's not that complicated to do a podcast though. I can knock these out pretty good. I do one five days a week. So you should be listening five days a week. We'll go down to three days a week. In August and September, the two dead months of the of the uh, year. So basically a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, but additional podcasts as circumstances warrant, should they warrant. So best thing to do is subscribe to the podcast and get it delivered directly to your device. This way, you know when a new podcast is there. You open up your phone, you go, oh, okay, John did a podcast. Uh, and then once the regular season, once the training camps open, we're back to five days a week. So plenty of podcasts for you, a whole lot more than anybody else is doing. Some people have only done one podcast in the month of July. Uh, I have done five days a week for the first few weeks here in July, still going strong for you. No one's pumping out Celtics content quite like lockdown Celtics. So make sure you're listening and uh, watching the show on YouTube. If you are a subscriber, I would love it if you shared the podcast. Tell your friends, tell everybody. They should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.